this evening is going to be in honor of Hugo Alcandri. Uh, many of us know Hugo. Uh, he fought in the Second World War, and actually he was one of two that was uh, entitled to go to the Nuremberg trials. He got to the concentration camps about a month after they were liberated. And Hugo, you may remember, he said the Pledge of Allegiance every year uh, on Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And I used to kid the VFW in the Legion because his uniform fit him. In fact, he was buried in his uniform about a week ago. So this is in honor of Hugo. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
Ma'am, I, I mean, I can address some of your concerns. Oh, you can sit down. And yeah, I mean, well, this issue was was looked at by my office. Um, I think that some of your concerns are probably unwarranted. The way that the the way that the code is structured is that um, basically, if the building is occupied, the code enforcement officer goes there and must show credentials and ask for entry if he believes there to be a violation. If he's granted entry, then he goes in and does the inspection. Um, if the building is vacant, if it's a vacant, dilapidated structure, he has a duty to go and try and find out, you know, reasonably who the owner is and contact that owner. If it's an occupied or an unoccupied structure and he's denied entry completely, then what the code said is, is that um, he has recourse and remedies provided by law. Okay, so you're, you're always protected. And, and additionally, there's a section of the code that's 102.10, and it says that the provisions of this code shall not be deemed to nullify any provisions of local, state, or federal law. And what you're talking about as far as Fourth Amendment is your federal right, okay, against illegal searches and seizures. Um, if you think that the code is structured so that if we go to your house at, say, 3 in the afternoon and knock on your door and you're not there, um, that the code enforcement officer has the right to bust in and, and search for violations. That, that's not how it's structured. Um, again, he has to, if he knows it to be an occupied structure, he has to ask your permission for entry. If it's denied, then he can get permission un with the way it's structured is under the law. So then what would happen is Mr. Delroy would call me and say, hey, we, we've been denied entry to this place. I believe there to be a concern and a violation here. What should I do? And I would probably refer him maybe to the magistrate to get a warrant or we could initiate a civil procedure to gain that entry. Um, this in no way, um, the way that it's currently structured, um, infringes upon any rights that you have under federal law or state law for that matter. You're always protected. Your rights of privacy and your rights of illegal searches and seizure are always protected. And it's protected under this provision. This provision that we're asked to be updated for the 2012 version hasn't changed from the 2009 version, which is the version that's currently in effect. Um, that, that language in section 104.3 has not changed. So the procedures that we've implemented continue, and, and, and we have implemented procedures on how we notify people. Um, and again, we don't just knock on doors and, and break into residences and, and, and you know, um, just gain entry any way at any time we feel fit and proper. There's a procedure for that. And again, you know, they have to ask permission. It's only if you're denied permission that those other steps come into play. And again, you're, nothing is preempted by the way the code is drafted. So I hope that that explains a little bit. You know, your protections are still there. Um, you know, and, and again, the procedure is laid out. I think it's clear enough in 104.3 uh, as to how this works. And I've talked to Mr. Delcoy about it. Um, I've talked to our fire marshal about the, the, the fire code issues, which don't apply to residential building. That's why I really haven't addressed them with you. But he's here tonight if you had any questions about the fire code. Um, but I did talk to our code enforcement officer, and he said that if you had any questions or concerns at all, to please contact him. He'll sit down and he'll meet with you, and he'll discuss any issues that you might have. But again, my legal recommendation after reviewing this um, is that your protections are, are taken care of, your concerns and issues and that the way this is drafted is a proper procedure for um, implementing the code. And it hasn't changed from the prior version, so it's, you know, everything is in line. Uh, Farm Marshal, uh, Jeff Wilson, do you have anything to add to that? So I think some of the, the, the biggest thing from what I saw was the International Property Maintenance Codes and the Fire Codes. They are two separate, and, and what he alluded to, Property maintenance codes do reflect on one and two family dwellings. The international fire codes do not. Okay, so, you know, it has nothing to do with your house, uh, but apartment buildings, uh, which is three units and up, then fire codes do come into play. Okay. Ma'am, if you have any concerns, you can talk to Mr. Delcroy. Um, if, you're not able, if he's not able to resolve your issues, then just have him contact me and I'll. Try to address whatever your issues are. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up to us. Um, are there any other visitors who wish to speak? <coughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Perry. Um, I'm from Columbia Gas of Pennsylvania, and I'm here to talk to you tonight and just inform the borough management and leadership of an infrastructure 
project that's going to be happening in Bellevue. Um, Columbia Gas in Pennsylvania is your local natural gas distributor or your natural gas utility here in Bellevue. And across Pennsylvania, Columbia Gas in Pennsylvania has 7,400 miles of pipe underground. Of that 7,400, 1,700 of it is old bare steel pipe. And over the past few years, and for another 17 years, we're going to be replacing all of that bare steel pipe with state-of-the-art plastic pipe. And the Bellevue community is one of those communities that's going to be benefiting from those pipeline replacement projects. Um, starting at the beginning of June, we will be replacing 5,800 feet of existing steel pipe in Bellevue with state-of-the-art plastic pipe. Um, there will be 200 customers who will actually have the entire replacement done, which is the pipe in the road as well as their customer service line. Um, and those streets are Union Avenue, Means Avenue, North Avenue, Glasser? Glasser. Glasser Avenue, Thomas Avenue, Jackson Street, Woods Avenue, um, is it Tingley? Tingley Avenue, Alley F, and Forest Avenue. And approximately 200 customers on those streets have already received, received a postcard, and they received a postcard two weeks ago letting them know of the project taking place, and customer letters were sent out today, again, additionally informing them of the project. Um, additionally, we have already replaced the pipe on Maryland Avenue, Summit Avenue, and Highland Place, but there will also be minimal construction on those streets as well. Um, nothing where we're actually digging into the ground. That is just, we're just up, making some upgrades to a modern natural gas delivery system on those streets. Um, I have gotten some calls from customers on those streets because they also received a postcard two weeks ago concerned that we were going to be replacing their new pipe that we just replaced two years ago on those streets. And I let them know that we're not. It's just minimal construction on Maryland, Summit, and Highland. Um, additionally, in, in addition to the postcard they received, they've already received, um, and in addition to the customer letter which was sent out today, we'll also be doing a press release. Um, to let the media know and the community know. Um, and basically, the packet of information has some basic facts about the project for you all to be aware. Um, but Columbia Gas in Pennsylvania, we strive to take care of our customers uh, every day of the year, not just when infrastructure projects are happening in their community. So in the packet that I've provided you with, um, there's also our customer pro programs brochure. And this is, I also encourage the um, also, the audience is that if you know anyone who's having a hard time paying their gas bill or you sus suspect that they might have a hard time paying their gas bill, we have a number of programs that will help um, those who need help paying their bills. And we want to make sure that this information is available to the customers. Um, you can go on our website and search customer programs or the information is in this, this for sure. So I want to leave that with you all. Does anyone have any questions about the infrastructure project that we take taking place? How is it going to affect the roads? Are we going to have to do road uh, openings? Um, yes, we will. And there will be temporary um, road restrictions when, when the work will be taking place, only during working hours. And we do provide flaggers, is that correct, Dustin? Yes. Dustin is our um, lead engineer on this project, so there will be flaggers where there is. Uh, we just paved parts of Maryland now. Um, in Mar on Maryland Avenue, that's that we will not be digging the street. Yeah, no, we'll be digging. Okay. No, on Maryland um, Summit and Highland, there will be no digging into the streets or anything like that. And we do strive to work with the boroughs. Um, and Dustin's been working with their engineer um, and zone enforcement. Yeah, 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 the zoning officer Terry. Yeah, to make sure that we do do the projects in the most efficient manner, because obviously you don't want to go in and. Okay, so yeah, that's my concern. Mm -hmm. What roads will have street openings? Road um, openings? It'll be Union Avenue, Means Avenue, North Avenue, <coughs> Lasser Avenue, Thomas Avenue, Jackson Street, Woods Avenue, Tingley Avenue, um, Alley F, and Forest Avenue. Okay. Jay, are any of these to be resurfaced this year? No, we have to put it outside on um, North Avenue because we were expecting um, gas coming in, so we didn't pull it out. Okay. And, and a good 
thing about these projects too is that we, our policy at Point asks Pennsylvania is to do full restoration work. So what is going to result in this is after we do have to dig into this street and we will be restoring the street to the exact same or better, which usually means for the community the full paving. Well, you know that'll be the case for this project. The full paving of the street from curb to curb as well as new sidewalks. So really, the communities actually benefit greatly from this. Not only do you get new infrastructure and pipelines, but you also get new streets and sidewalks. Um, and we do, our restoration policy is that we do camera the entire area before we do any of our work for liability reasons for us. So we know exactly what that property looked like before we started. So that's how we're able to restore it back to the exact or better condition than when we found it. And so with this particular project, these are the only streets involved. Are the other streets already have the plastic bath pipe? Or is that at a future phase? I believe that they've been working in Bellevue for the past how Yeah, uh, all that pipe has been placed on Maryland Summit. But we will be in Bellevue probably in future years as well. There is no, there, there, is. there is quite Pittsburgh hat is quite an old area, so it does have a lot of very old infrastructure. Um, some of our pipes in the ground are 100 years old, um, so you can imagine that they've it's served World War II, and it's also serving us today, that's why we want to make these improvements. Uh, will you be doing any kind of pressure checking of the houses that will feed into that? Yes. We do full safety checks, and um, we just like to remind everyone that although this pipe does need to be replaced, we would, ne we would not be running a system that was not safe. Um, so, just to let everyone know. <laughs> you said, you said that, um, you're going to be doing some where you replace the lateral as well as the main. Who's responsible for the replacement of the lateral? Because usually that's the homeowner, I just was curious. It is the homeowner. Okay. And that's why, um, yeah. it, well, it is the homeowner in the normal situation that if you would, say, for example, come to your property and find a, a natural gas leak on your service line, in normal circumstances, if it wasn't an infrastructure project that we have planned, you would have the property owner would have to take care of that. With this infrastructure project, we come in and we replace it. So we take care of those costs. And you're restoring the property back to mm -hmm. the condition. I just want to make sure. Yep. Okay, no cost to the homeowner. So they have a leaky gas pipe. This is to benefit them. Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. And what is happening is Basically, the pipe that's under the ground has come to the end of its useful life. So right now, it's costing Columbia Gas in Pennsylvania, and therefore our customers, through the rates. It's causing our customers and ourselves more money to, to continually band-aid these pipes than it would be just to replace them all together. So that's why it's more cost-effective more cost effective for everyone and better for our customers if we just replace this pipe. And it also provides them with more reliable service. Any questions for anyone else? Uh, are the meters being changed also? Um, I believe so. Yeah, well, yeah. Is it part of the process that the meters are currently inside the homes or buildings? No. They move to the outside. And, and that, that, that work is also done with the cost of the customer. Yeah, we'll also take care of that. And um, we like to work with the customers and they can help us choose, you know, where outside of their home. Just to as much degree as possible, they get to choose, you know, where outside of their home the meter is going to be placed as long as it's safe. Okay, do they have one more street here? Is this Jackson Street? Are you talking about Jackson Avenue, north and south? Or just... just north of Jackson, north of Jackson. between uh, Means and North Avenue? Just that piece of North Jackson. So if you get at the end of Means away from Union Avenue, mm -hmm. from there up to North Avenue, that's just that stretch of Jackson. And I did want to encourage everyone as well, my contact information is on the second page of this fact sheet. Please, if you do have any further questions, please email me, please call me. If you hear that there's any um, constituents in Bellevue or any of your neighbors who have questions, please give me a call. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Any questions from anyone else? Hey, thank you for updating us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any visitors who wish to speak? If you can step up to the podium. Okay, no visitors.
name's Tom Kelly. I live at 24 South Pride Avenue. I'm also on the public works uh, for the borough. First thing I'd like to address is uh, the entrance to Bellevue from the high level bridge uh, on 65. We've been sent down to clean up a lot of debris down on Brighton Road in the last year. This section of the boulevard is it's a joke. If you, if you take the boulevard in and get off the north shore by the casino, you see nice maintained grass. Then you turn around and come back out the boulevard, you go through the city of Pittsburgh, you see concrete walls deteriorating all along 65, you see trees, it's a joke, it's a joke. Then you cross the bridge into Bellevue, and we have the same thing. This is the first thing out of the city of Pittsburgh. I wish someone on this committee would tell the Department of Public Works to get down, clean the place up, rototill it, plant some grass up to the street, up to a uh, street that's up on top there. It would be easy to maintain instead of weed whacking it. You cut the grass, you have a beautiful green grass, first thing people see in Bellevue. Second thing I'd like to uh, question, uh, I was doing a job with me and my Mike Barr and the resident, uh, I heard the resident wrote a letter comp complimenting us on what we did. And I just wondered if the red, red, letter was ever read. And if it was read, who was it read to? Because I was never notified, my boss was never notified about this letter. And if it was a bad letter, would have been notified. Would have been notified you did something wrong and so forth. So I'm just curious if this happened because uh, I was told that the lady that did write a letter on this. And not to pat us on the back, just let know what happened. And uh, another thing, it's been three years and five months that the Public Works Committee, or Department, has been on a wage freeze. We've been in contract negotiations and uh, totally absurd what I have observed as a member of the, uh, bar of the bargaining unit. And I have heard to the grapevine we got a 2% raise, a 2% raise, a 2% raise. But I get no notification from anybody. But lo and behold, last week I got a, a check from the borough. It's a retro check for all this back pay. Well, I work by the hour, and I work so much by the hour. So I did my math, and my retro check is in large amount of error. And I took it up to the uh, department, I had the, the uh, clerk, and talked to her and explained everything, and we did the math, and my math was correct, and she uh, advised me, maybe I should take it to the, uh, the union. I've got no results from the union for three and a half years. I've had two meetings, so why waste my time? She was going to uh, do something with it. Maybe you people can help me out, because it's not a union problem, it's not a management problem, it's an arithmetic problem. Basic math. 2%, do, you do the math and then add it up. And here's my check, I can't cash it. I, don't, I do not want to cash it because it's in error. What do I gain by cashing the check? It's in error. Now I make more nightmares for everybody. The last thing I want to address is uh, the resignation of uh, Tony Barbarino from the uh, Department of Public Works. I don't know if anybody knows, but he was allegedly filmed while he was doing his job and it was a big deal made out of it. And the way I understand it, he was to be fired. And cooler heads prevailed, and I guess they heard the other side of Tony's story. And I think Tony proved himself that he did no error, and it seems to me he almost forgot. It had an extreme mental effect on Tony Barbarino, which trickled down into our department. And uh, it was terrible what this man went through. It was suggested he look for a job while he has a job. Tony did look for a job, Tony found a job, Tony's received a job. He was run out of his time. He did not want to leave. But you people are going to say, no, he wasn't run out. He, he resigned. Yes, he resigned. I know. But there's a lot of shame for the borough. He was a good leader. He worked with what we had. He never made excuses. And most of the people in my department would do our job with no excuses. We trusted Tony, and he trusted us. We have not had one union grievance in the whole six years of his watch. That's a tribute to management and labor working together. 
And his loss is somebody else's gain. All I'm pleading with you people now is and when you, you get wrap it up here just past five minutes. All right, I'll wrap it up. But boy. Well, I, 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 20 minutes for two people. Okay, I'm going to wrap up. When you people hire somebody, please go out and get the person, best person available. With no strings attached, with no politics, get the person, best person available so our department can continue to progress. That's it. My time's up. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, concerning Tony, that's a personnel issue, and that's not something that we can address at this point. Um, as the letter from Sandy Gillingham, uh, it was read, and um, Whitney, did you do anything with that? I thought we were going to do something with that. Like what? Um, let the supervisor know. I can, I can get a copy down to the garage. Okay. Because it was very complimentary. Uh, she felt that you did an excellent job that you were very considerate of her ingress and egress into the driveway because the problem area was in the driveway area and it was from Sandy uh, Gillingham. And <coughs> is that, um, what's that, brick, that steep brick street going down? Does that mean? Mead. Mead? Okay, Mead Avenue. So no, she's very complimentary and Whitney does have it. And um, yeah, I've reflected it um, in my manager's report to council, so at least Council has an understanding of the compliments that the Public Works Department is receiving, and I'll be certain to pass it along to the department top. Um, and as concerning your uh, retro check, that's something that you have to talk with your union rep about. Because there was an agreement as to the amount that would be paid in retro pay, and your union representatives did agree. That. So you will need to discuss that with them. Okay. I'm asking you people to help. I am also talking to the bar door. Sir, they can't. They, they, can't, they, they, can't, they, can't, they can't by law. You're represented. You're, you, you have a union representative that speaks on your behalf under contract. They can't. It would be it would be an unfair practice for them to do that. So you have to go through the proper chain. If you have an issue, you take it to them, and then they can take it to the borough and me. So that's really how it has to go. I'm not saying we won't address your issue or your concern, but you have to go to them first. It's just the way you can't, they can't, you can't deal directly with the council on this. Well, how do they get a retro check if I, if uh, me as a member didn't agree to anything? We weren't even voted by anything. So how do you guys try to check it? You have to, you have to, it had to be voted on. So, I mean, I don't think it's it what? your union member about it. It should have been voted on. It what? Voted on. Who voted on it? The members, of your, the members of your bargaining unit, apparently. No, we never had it. Well, you need to talk to your union rep about that. That's, well, then, that's the proper way. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the proper way. Somehow, you people wrote a check to me, and the union didn't agree to it. Maybe they said they didn't agree to it, but you see where there's a confusion here. Okay, Tom, your problem is not with us. It is with the communications of your union. So uh, my recommendation is to use the proper channels uh, to get your answer. I mean, it's not like we don't want to, but um, you, you need to talk to your union representatives. Okay. I want the whole part. And, you know what, I have a question on that. Okay, clean up Route 65 up to, and you didn't name the street. What was the, what was the name of the street? I think it's Rage. Okay. No, probably Kendall. Kendall? Because Rings is and the, uh, the, I forget what that is. Yeah, so maybe Kendall. So you're, ta you're talking about the corner of Kendall and High River Boulevard? Yeah, but the street goes from Kendall parallel to the Boulevard. It goes around towards Greenlaw to that. Oh, okay. That I is. think it's called Greens. Okay, is that privately owned? Mayor, is that privately owned? I, I have no idea what the property is privately owned or not. But I, and I love the fact that he's passionate enough to come up here and tell Congress what he's done. Uh, some years ago, we had an issue with a Union Avenue and debris and overgrowth of uh, plants and stuff. And I think that's a county road. State road. That's state road. We contacted our, late, our, our, late, our state representative and voiced through our DAS uh, that that needs cleaned up. And within a week, we had results. So 
I'm thinking if we can go the same route this time and get some work done on the boulevard, they'll determine what's owned and what's not, and then we can go from there. Maybe we can do it in coordination with each other. Did you say that was state? Oh, uh, 65 is a state road, correct. We have maintained it, but since uh, I've been here, to the bridge. We have weed whacked it and cut grass. And right at the corner of the temple, there's green grass, and the rest of it's a joke. I mean, it could be easily fixed. Easily. I believe the state has 10 feet on either side of 65. Well, at this point, though, DPW has been maintaining it. He's been cutting the grass. In that area, have to you got the grass where all the political signs are from, from up top, right. yeah. from here to the wall, east towards Pittsburgh. We maintain it with weed whackers, and it's, it's, it's a joke. It, it could be maintained grass all the way through. It would be that hard to do to plant grass and maybe need a little bit of topsoil or fill it. And you could do it in house, and then you can maintain it by cutting the grass, and people move through their garbage over the hill. And, yeah, what do you think? Okay, um, I think we should be contacting the state. And can this go to the Public Works Committee and uh, discuss? Yeah, we'll through, yeah. Okay, and um, I'll so be in touch with them to explain the situation. Okay. Yeah, okay. So maybe between you and Whitney, uh, you yeah. can contact the state and then discuss this at the committee meeting and then come up with a plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate that. Uh, any other visitors who wish to speak? Okay. In, in addition to doing that, I think a quick phone call to, to Matsy's office will get some results on some basic general cleanup in the meantime also. Okay. And, and still getting, and I understand things have to go to the committee, but instead of being any more laborious than necessary. Okay, thank you. Any other visitors who wish to speak? Okay, thank you for coming. Before we start, um, we are going to be, at the end of the meeting, we're going to have an executive session for personnel issues. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Yes. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes for April 9th, 2013 House meeting, April 23rd, 2013 Public Safety Committee meeting, April 23rd, 2013 Finance Committee meeting, April 23rd, 2013 Parks and Recreation Committee meeting, April 23rd, 2013 DPW Committee meeting, May 7th, 2013 Pre Council meeting. Discussion on the motion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Do we have a motion to approve the payment of the bill list and amendment? I'd like to make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Okay, motion has been made in the second to, to approve the payment of May bill list and addendum. Discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call please. Councilman Brown. Aye. Councilman Kamala. Bellevue Station storm pipe. Uh, the 
earth around the outfall of the pipe that was repaired last year has collapsed and has resulted in some erosion uh, along the sanitary soil along the West Bellevue roadway alignment. Uh, took a look at it today and it looks like the large machinery that was rented last year needs to be uh, done again in order to clean that out. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a repetitive problem until some kind of permanent fix is instituted. Uh, but, I mean, I have some pictures here that I'll leave with the DAS if you want to take a look at that. But one of the things that the that council should consider is allowing either the public works to rent a machine or hiring a contractor to open that up so it doesn't back up the flow and uh, erode further. Um, beyond that, I think we're going to need to talk to Avalon find out how to go about recovering that pipe again and getting some kind of a diversion so all that water goes into the creek rather than down the road. So that's the main issue that came up today. And I want to put that in front of council. Um, why wasn't it done permanent the last time? I just assumed that it was a permanent repair, not a temporary repair. It, it was it was, thousands, of thousands of dollars. It was something that was done by public, the Public Works Department. Uh, they, I guess they thought they could fix it permanently. That hillside, which is on the well, on the West Bellevue Station side of the parking lot, the parking lot is moving. Everything moves towards the river. That is slowly creeping. Unless you put some kind of a wall there, you're going to have this recurring problem. It's pretty steep in that location. Uh, I think the permanent solution is to open it up from where the manhole is put in, the storm sewer manhole, down to the creek, and just keep on cleaning out that channel after rains, because it's going to become a maintenance issue. So it wasn't fixed permanently. It was working for the better part of a year. Uh, it was one of those things that, that just it didn't work. Can it really be fixed permanently, or is this just the nature of the beast? I think it's the nature of the beast, because I don't think there's enough money to fix it the way it needs to be fixed. I mean, we may be talking about retaining walls and all that kind of stuff, but right now, I think, you need to open that channel and let the, let the water flow because it's backing up overflowing where it shouldn't be. Okay, um, our next step is Board Action Item 3, Board Action Item 3. Our next step is to have the DPW go down and look at this. Well, we did today. Okay. We did today. Okay. Uh, I think the next step is to find out, you know, the rental of the equipment, if the DPW, uh, I think it's Joe, whether he can, I think he did it last time he operated that machine how long it would take to open that up and then get the water flowing and then come back and take a look at a more permanent solution to that issue with Avalon because it's a joint, I mean, that, that pipe is a joint venture. I'd like to bring Avalon in to talk about what we can do jointly that way because they're contributing, their side of the hill is contributing water to it too. More of it's coming from Bellevue than some of it's coming from Avalon. I want to make sure everybody's on board with whatever solution we choose. That's what we go with. Okay, so that's the only uh, big issue that came up. And there's other things on, um, on the agenda which you'll be taking action on. Which I, I think I went over <coughs> last time. Okay. Oh, it's, it's right there. And that's all. Okay, any questions for our engineer John Rustin? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Librarian Denise is not here. Okay. Council, any council reports? Okay, I have a couple of things. I'm very excited. I have been talking with uh, members of the school board, and we are going to have an intergovernmental committee that we're going to have two representatives from the school board, two representatives from Valley Fire, and two representatives from Avalon. Avalon is going to be discussing it tonight as well. Um, our representatives are going to be me and Lynn Heff. So we are going to meet in the very near future, and then our next meeting after that will be in uh, August. So I think this is um, really positive, and I'm, I'm very happy that uh, we could work this out. Secondly, I forgot to mention this at the last meeting, and our code enforcement officer was there, so he could probably better explain it than me. But we did, um, we asked for a grant for a summer intern for our code enforcement department. We did get it. So we have an um, undergraduate working uh, May, June, and July. 
and uh, what she will be doing, she'll be working with our code enforcement uh, department. She is going to be going street by street, house by house, and logging on a spreadsheet on the uh, problem properties and uh, the vacant properties so that we can better um, track um, the, these particular properties. So, um, Wendy, did I, is there anything else I didn't? No, she's already started. second professional office environment experiences in local government. And she served before for Pittsburgh History and Landmarks Foundation, so she'll be a really good asset in terms of um, generating ideas on what to do with some of the properties that they should reuse them uh, or demolish them. So, mm -hmm. so we're, we're happy, very happy to have her. Half of being paid by uh, the local government academy, so, which is state government. So. Okay, committee chair reports. Finance. Our chair of finance is Susan Clusey. Excuse me. Beth. Oh, I'm sorry. Mayor's report. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, not on here. Total collections was $22,408.97 as is in the packets and broken down according to the police department revenues and uh, meter collection. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm sorry. It wasn't on here, so I. Okay, committee chair reports, finance, our chair, I'll see Ms. Goosey. Uh, first one is I move to recommend payment to the Quaker Valley Council of Governments <coughs> on the business district streetscape design project in the amount of $8,021 for CD 37-2.2.5. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, the motion has been made to recommend payment to the Quaker Valley Council of Governments for the business district streetscape design project in the amount of $8,000. And it, 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 we've had a motion, hence it's been seconded. Um, discussion on the motion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call, please. Councilman Camilla. Aye. Councilman Hoffman. Aye. Councilman Cecilia. Aye. Councilman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilman Bronwyn. Aye. President Marchner. Aye. Motion carried. Next motion, please. I move to approve change number one to civil and environmental consultants for the business district streetscape design project in the amount of nine hundred and seventy-five dollars for CD thirty-seven two point two point five. Do we have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded to move to approve change order number one to civil and environmental consultants for the business district streetscape design project in the amount of nine hundred and seventy-five dollars for CD three seven two point two point five. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Roll call, please. Councilman Hoffman. Aye. Councilman Ciciani. Aye. Councilwoman Viscusi. Aye. Councilman Viscusi. Aye. aye. Councilwoman Bromwich. Aye. Councilman Kimbala. Aye. President Washington. Aye. Motion carries. Any other questions for our chair or our comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sue. Parks and Recreation, um, Jim Sissian. I have Jane read your motion, please. Uh, I need to approve the installation of the water fountain at the library of the door of the fire. The fountain will exceed $1,207. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the installation of the water fountain at the library of George Bauer Plumbing at cost of one seat, $1,270 from budget line item 409 373 Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call, please. Councilman Ciciani. I read to myself this vote if someone wants to know what I'd be glad to tell. Councilwoman Viscusi. Aye. Councilman Viscusi. Aye. Councilwoman Brown. Aye. Councilman Camilla. Aye. Councilman Camilla. Aye. President Washington. Aye. President Harris. Seconded 
to move to approve the replacement of trees at Bain Avenue by Larry Miller at no cost to the borough. Discussion on the motion? Okay, it says trees, and I thought it was just a tree, a sapling, and then, okay, one tree, okay, so it's one tree, and me personally, I do not want to see a shallow rooted tree because what happens is then it grows into the grass and it becomes a tripping acid. So I'm not familiar with what trees are shallow and what are deep. So I would prefer that it's a deep rooted tree. That's just my opinion. Can we change the motion? Um, or does, any, does anyone agree or disagree with me? Jane? I thought they were just replacing the exact same tree with that. So from my understanding, the last council meeting, we were just replacing the exact same tree that was there. Well, there was a, a, a the location. The, the offer of the tree was a, uh, a maple, which I think that may have been a maple, I'm not sure, or a red oak, possibly. Either what one. was the second one? I believe it's a red oak, I, I, which I think we already have a couple of those in the park. Okay. It would be kind of, it would be, uh, the council's choice, which are does anybody know more about trees than I do? I mean, well, well, the only reason roots of a tree come up, there are tripping hazards when the, there's erosion around it. Roots go to the water, so they'll go down to the water table. It's from erosion around the roots that <coughs> causes the roots to be exposed. You, you asked anybody I'm just telling you. I, 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 I just would like it to be that I would want a deep rooted tree and not a shallow rooted tree. That's just my thought. Any other discussion? Did he say when he's going to do this? Do we know when he's going to do it, Mayor? Do you know when he's going to do it? I guess whatever you tell him it's okay or not. Maybe you can come to our next part of the meeting and just in light class and we can invite you. I think you want to get a lot of this. It's like. It's a good offer, right? Oh. If you would just come in and like us what kind of tree it is. Uh, I just told you what kind of tree it was. It's either a maple or a red oak, whatever your choice is. Does anybody care what kind of tree that is? No, he's done this before, hasn't he, George? I believe he has, yes. And there's been no problems. So okay. I can use his judgment then. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call, please. Oh, we don't need, no, we don't need a roll call. Oh, yeah. So, no nays? Okay. Any other questions for our chair of uh, Parks and Recreation? Jane? Yeah, um, last week, Mr. Sassina asked um, for it to be on the agenda of the fireworks. So, I'd like to make a promotion to choose to uh, get the more fireworks, the fireworks. Um, could you repeat that? I think you the um, this is the North Borough, what's the name of the committee? North Borough's Fireworks. Fireworks Committee. Okay, for 2,500 $2, from, what was the number? 2,658. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to, um, to pay North Borough's the Fire Works Committee 2500 from 0145-268. Discussion on the motion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilwoman Bronner. Aye. Councilman Mellon. Aye. Councilman Hobley. Aye. Councilman Sissiani. Aye. President Warshner. Aye. Motion carries. Any other questions for the Chair of Parks and Recreation? Okay, thank you, Jim. And Jim. <laughs> Public Works Chair, Jim Vescusi. Okay, I move to approve base bid in alternate one and alternate two to Victor Paving and construction in the amount of $113,312.95 for the 2013 road paving program. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to 
approve the base bid and alternate one and alternate two to Victor Baby and construction the amount of one hundred and thirteen thousand three hundred twelve dollars and ninety five cents for the two thousand thirteen road paving program. Discussion on the motion. So, what does what does this consist of? How many? Um, what streets were there? Uh, I know we, we discussed this at uh, pre council. We actually named off the streets. So the uh, off the top of my head is the um, parking lot, uh, the driving, the swimming pool, gate lane, uh, the street by the hospital. I think that was the three, right? Yeah, just, I don't know what that's called, West Street? From Star. Okay, the last one is I move to approve the report. 
prepare a current lawn tractor with parts from Critchlow Enterprises at a cost not to exceed $2,633.26 from budget line, budget line item 430-374. So second? Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the repair of the current lawn tractor. Current lawn tractor for, for the parts from Critch Loan Enterprises at a cost of we see $2,633.26 from Brunches, 9.430.374. Discussion on the motion? James is Yes. Um, this tractor is about 17 or 18 years old. 17. Uh, you look right at you get a new tractor for thirty-two hundred dollars. If you're going to put uh, this much money, this is going to the engine on this tractor. Motor. In your motor, yeah. Oh, that was the transmission. No transmission. Oh, that was that one. Okay. Um, if you put this much money into an engine for a tractor like this, this old, and you know other parts are going to start going, I consider a new tractor. I think you're doing for thirty-two hundred dollars. Um, why was the decision to fix this one as opposed to replace it? Mark, do you know? Well, uh, it, it, it was, there was three, we got three. It's the new tractor, the transmission for the one, it was almost $5,000 is what we decided to buy new, and then the repair. It, it was cheaper just to repair the motor on the second one. Since we're buying new, we can have two new tractors or whatever. But this thing is so old, it's going to start costing you money. The new tractor. They just had a breakdown on tractors. They just got the one running recently, wasn't it? Last few days? They've been waiting for parts to come in sometime in the last day or two. <laughs> They've been waiting on parts on this by the way. Now, a new tractor would probably take the place of almost two of them, the way the new one is. And this third one, we get the. Uh, in the transmission, the rear end transmission yeah, section, and that would be your like a spare set, a second one. So you'd only have two of them, because one would take care of two, and then you have the second one we could prepare. Well, you're you're in that yeah. somehow with only two tractors. Two tractors, but it would be one is so old it should be in the museum, and you have a new tractor. I think you're going to put that new tractor on a trailer all the back and forth of the other one broke down. I would consider a new one.
Oh, no, I'm happy with the new one. I'm just talking about that old one that we're repairing. There was a significant reason why we're repairing that and not replacing it. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call, please. Councilman Hawthorne? Aye. Councilman Ciciani? Nay. Councilwoman Muscuzzi? Aye. Councilman Muscuzzi? Aye. Councilman Bronner? Aye. Councilman Canala? Aye. President Morsner? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, any other questions for our Chair of uh, Public Works? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion for Public Works to allocate uh, some money to run up at that. I'm going to call it back. Station. How about just rent equipment? Equipment to fix the West Belton station. Um, not to exceed six thousand dollars. I, I want to say it only cost us two five last time we rented it. But it's hard to I don't think it was two five last time we rented that she but let's go with six thousand and be safe. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to um, approve the expenditure for public works to rent equipment to fix West Valley Station not to exceed six thousand dollars. Discussion on the motion? Jim. How long would they have the rental for how much per day? Well, that, that's why we were just to see the price. Yeah, that's what we can get it through call, you know, or yeah. any other places we're this Do might give you the option to look at hiring a contractor to come into the yeah. versus renting the equipment to have public works to see what the cost differential is. I think it will be less expensive for your public works department to do this. We, you know, we're moving that blockage <coughs> so you know what the, the per unit cost is, the only unit the cost of that machine. I don't know what it cost last year to do it. Yeah, but the main focus on this is to, to, to remove the debris from that particular area and we need this machine to do that. Well, once they do that, then they say, okay, we'll take the machine back because this is way too much for us and we need to do something. Right now, we need to have a call in the machine. If we're going to do it. Yeah, your backhoe does not have the reach to do it. You need a, a larger ice cream. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the motion as we have it would be adequate at this point in time. Yes. Okay. Mark, did you have any other No. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Nays? Roll call, please. Councilman Sissi. Aye. Councilwoman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilman Muscuzzi. Aye. Councilwoman Brown. Aye. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve resolution 0113 
authorizing the director hiring the part time public work staff. Discussion on the motion? Mayor? These resolutions, this one and the prior one, are to hire the people that have been, have been named, correct? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, this, these resolutions are to hire the people that have been named. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I, I assume both uh, meet the council's uh, rule of nepotism. Your written policy on that? No, we do not have a nepotism policy. We don't? No. Okay, because this time last year, council person Ron has told us we specifically have a nepotism policy in place. We, uh, the finance committee, I believe, came to us and we did not feel that we wanted to have a nepotism policy. So there was not a nepotism policy, so it never came out of committee. I'm a little disappointed in that because after last year, Councilman, Councilperson Bromwich admitted that it was a personal thing uh, against my son, that I suggested we do a nepotism policy to eliminate that kind of personal issues. But if it, if it, was, if it was back to me, that's fine. We appreciate the suggestion, but it never came oh, out. No, no, it wasn't a suggestion, it was a question. Okay, well, it never came out of me, so we do not have state and federal law under 14th and 
fourth, fourth Amendment right. So it's covered in there for what you're concerned about. For those words. So okay. that's all. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Nays? Aye. Roll call, please. Councilman Hoffman. Aye. Councilman Sassiani. Aye. Councilwoman Viscusi. Aye. Councilman Viscusi. Aye. Councilwoman Ronlett. Aye. Councilman Canelo. Aye. President Warshner. Aye. Motion carries. Do we have a um, motion to take to the table the way it goes? Okay, that was on to take from the table the way it works. No motion? Okay. Next, um, International Fire Code. I'm going to take from the table the final. I'm going to take from the table the final. We have a second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. Motion has been made and seconded to take from the table for final reading and adoption of ordinance which shall establish an act. The 2012 International Fire Code will provide fines and penalties for violations there. Um, do we have a motion to adopt the work? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the International Fire Code. Second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to uh, adopt an ordinance which shall establish and enact the 2012 International Fire Code and provide fines and penalties for violations there. Discussion on the motion? Yeah, I agree. What does this consist of? Does that have to do with the grill on the fireplace thing, or is this something different? No, this is, this is again, this is the uh, International um, Fire Code, which deals with, um, doesn't deal with any uh, residential buildings, no, no uh, single or double family residential buildings. So it's just updating the code we already use. We have a 09 version, this is just updating the 2004 version. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. <coughs> Nays? Roll call, please. Councilman Sassiani. Aye. Councilwoman Mascusi. Aye. Councilman Mascusi. Aye. Councilwoman Bronley. Aye. Councilman Canelo. Aye. Councilman Hopley. Aye. President Warshner. Aye. Motion carries. Do we have a, um, but this is a second yeah, this is, yeah. I'd like to make a motion for the second parking, parking board. It's reducing the parking day now. Okay, so that has been. Okay, so we don't do anything. Okay. Any old business? Mayor? I would just, before all this, I'd just like to ask Council to consider reading the wage ordinance for the third reading. Okay, Council other old business? Okay, any new business? No, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know, it's all the word. Um, I just have a concern because when you go back and we joined all the game together and started working with us, back then, as you know, we talked about the grants recently, but Katie worked here and Doug, and they worked hard on those grants and we got all the grants and that was Kathy helped them. But in the last two years, we're starting to seem, according to what I hear from People that kind of are starting to seem uncooperative and hard to work with, and I think we're, we're becoming in danger of losing opportunity with all getting together. And I just think we got to start moving forward with some of those things that we're not doing. And, and one of those is BDAC. I mean, BDAC is stalled right now. I know that Bruce um, Barringer would like to take that position. I think he's been trying to reach you. And I think in their eyes, they're seeing us in the wrong way. And for whatever reason, They're spending their money on it, and we're not getting anywhere lately. So um, I just I'm asking if you would consider talking to Bruce about it. Oh, I certainly will. In fact, I just saw him and he didn't mention anything to me. So um, I saw him at the ghost in a photo for him. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I will uh, I, I will uh, contact him or if you see him as to contact him. Yeah, I think he's been trying to actually. Uh, okay. I, I don't know how. I mean, I have an email address. I have a okay. home phone. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make sure of that. And, um, you can also call me at work. Okay. If you can give me my work phone number. Okay. And the office has the work phone number. Uh, so okay. absolutely, I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Okay. Okay, okay. Any, any other, uh, what are we on? We're on uh, new business. Any other new business? Okay. All 
Are there any uh, visitors who wish to speak? If you could step up to the podium, you have two minutes. Yeah, please write your name on the register and address and state your name.
Councilor Mrs. Manning? Aye. President Warshner? Nay. Motion? So, quick question. What happens to this ordinance? No, this one. It goes back. It's, it's dead. dead. It's dead. They can bring it back again.